Hey, what's up, YouTube? Down the Smartphone Guy coming back at you with another video, and today I want to talk about my daily driver. Uh, so first of all, let me just give you a little bit of perspective in terms of what I use on a daily basis. So uh, number one, I always have an iPhone with me at some point. So I'm always using either the iPhone 10 or the iPhone 8 Plus. Right now, for me, the daily phone that I want to use, I definitely prefer the iPhone 8 Plus over the iPhone 10. So the iPhone 8 Plus has my Verizon SIM in it. That's just kind of like a secondary SIM. My my main SIM is a T-Mobile device. So um, my T-Mobile SIM, uh, for the longest time, I would say for about the last month, was in this device right here. This is the Google Pixel 2 XL, a fantastic device, one that I think is definitely worth considering uh, if you want the latest and greatest from Google. However, there is a new Android phone in town that really has my heartstrings, and that is this one right here. Here it is the OnePlus 5T. So the OnePlus 5T right now is my favorite Android device. So why is the OnePlus 5T my favorite Android device? So let's go ahead and talk about that in this video. All right, so if you've watched any of my videos before, you've probably seen this list here. And this list is the six areas that I think a phone really needs to hit very, very well in order to be considered a flagship device or to be considered my daily driver. So let's go ahead and talk about each of these six areas when it comes to the OnePlus 5T. So the first area is the build quality. So I'm gonna give this a nine out of 10 when it comes to build quality. So it's not a 10 out of 10. And the reason I say that is because of course, we still have that 1080p display. It is not a 4K or 2K or any kind of resolution like that. This is a 1080p display. It is AMOLED, um, but it is a nice six inch display. Basically from the five to the 5T, all they've done is, is they've stretched out that aspect ratio. So it's gone from 16, by, uh, 16 to nine to 18 to nine and made it a little bit larger. For, so from 5.5 inches up to six inches, um, but it looks very nice. The viewing angles are really good. Um, I have absolutely no uh, qualms with uh, the display here. Now it could be better, it could be 2K, um, but I think it looks very, very nice. Now, the other thing that they've changed obviously from the OnePlus 5 to the OnePlus 5T is the fingerprint sensor on the back. And I will say that it is absolutely fantastic. It works very, very well. No issues with that whatsoever. And I do prefer a metal backed phone. Does glass look more premium? Yeah, I would say that glass looks more premium, but for me personally, I just prefer a metal backing, especially when it is a good metal backing. So there are phones, you can definitely find phones um, that have a metal backing that don't necessarily feel as premium. So let me give you just a quick example here. This is the Xiaomi Mi A1, still a very nice phone. It looks honestly like a whole lot like a OnePlus 5, um, but this one you can just feel it's just not quite as premium uh, when you're holding it in hand. So still a very nice device, um, but it's only $200, where this one you can feel it just has just a more premium feel to it. And one of the things that I really like about it is that curvature in the back makes it fit in the hand really, really well. So build quality wise, I'm not gonna sit here and say that this is a 10 out of 10, but I would definitely give it a good nine out of 10. Um, so that is a huge plus. So performance wise, I don't think you're gonna find a, uh, Android device that's any faster than this. In fact, I would easily say that this is just as fast as an iPhone 8 Plus, maybe even faster, honestly. Uh, it doesn't get the same scores that you get with the iPhone uh, 10 or the iPhone 8 Plus when it comes to benchmarks, um, but honestly, I, this thing just absolutely flies. Um, so let me go back into the history here, and uh, you can see it gets a six uh, 6,730 uh, when it comes to the multi-core score, 1961 to the single core score. but there are really literally no hiccups with this device. Everything about it just flies. I have the eight gigs of RAM version, so that definitely helps it out a little bit. Um, but really, uh, even with the OnePlus 5 when I had that, there was just absolutely no stutter in the software whatsoever. So performance-wise, this is easily, for me, a 10 out of 10, a area where I would say um, I have no hesitation recommending this phone if you're just looking for a really good performing phone. Now, in terms of the cameras, um, I actually made a mistake when I compared this to the Essential phone. I said that this has a telephoto lens. It doesn't actually have a telephoto lens because they changed it here uh, with the OnePlus 5. 
um, T, they actually made it so it's a the same focal length as the um, the secondary camera. So both cameras have the same focal length. Um, so let's just go ahead and take a look at some of the pictures I shot with it. So actually I made a video. Um, so if you watched my uh, video about the syllable uh, D9Xs, that was actually made completely on the OnePlus 5. I edited it and everything on the OnePlus 5T, which is not something I normally do. I'm just looking at my desk setup. A real low light picture here uh, with a Christmas tree. So that was is, um, just a good low light picture there. So I will say um, that uh, one of the things that's maybe a little bit of a negative here um, is the secondary camera is supposed to be uh, for low light situations, but honestly, um, like a lot of people have said, you really just don't even notice it. Um, but one thing I do really like is the optical image stabilization. So I was actually walking at a very fast pace. So just kind of watch the stabilization in this video as I'm walking it does a great job of kind of stitching it together and really you don't really notice a whole lot of movement. It is very fluid, almost as good as being on a gimbal. I was shocked. This is not on a gimbal. This is me just walking, holding the phone and it is smooth. I, I mean, honestly, it just, I was kind of amazed. This only has electronic image stabilization. There is no optical image stabilization on this phone and it does a fantastic job. Uh, now that was at 1080p at 30 frames per second. So I have heard people say that maybe if you shoot it up to 4k, it might not be as good with the uh, stabilization, but it does a fantastic job. Um, so picture quality wise, um, I'm still not going to say, um, I will definitely say for sure, that this phone takes better pictures. This is the Google Pixel 2 XL. For me, right now, this is the best phone. If you're just looking for the absolute best still pictures you can get, I would say the um, the Google Pixel 2 XL is still the king when it comes to still photos. Now, in terms of actual uh, video footage, I would still actually recommend the phone that I'm shooting this on, the HTC U11, um, because it, I would say still hands down has the best video you're going to get out of any phone. Um, but anyways, the OnePlus 5T does take great pictures. Um, the portrait mode works very well, um, not as well as this phone, not as well as the Google Pixel 2 XL, but it takes very good portrait mode pictures. So camera wise, I'm going to give this a 9 out of 10. Again, it's not perfect, um, but it's still a very good camera. Battery life, I'm going to give a 10 out of 10 for this phone. I have been getting, um, I, I'm not exactly sure, I, I kind of um, today, I didn't actually charge it overnight last night at all, um, and so I did never get it up to 100%. I just kind of charged it up once uh, during the day. But in general, on the days when I'm starting at 100%, I can easily get through a full day with 30 to 40% battery life left over. So um, just to kind of give you um, some perspective, I'm looking at, so you can see I kind of charged it up a little bit earlier today. Uh, but in general, I'm getting like six to seven um, even seven and a half hours of screen on time with this battery. And so it's only a 3,300 3, milliamp hour battery, I believe. And uh, it just does very well. I have no worries about um, this thing dying through me uh, for me through a day. And not only that, but it has the dash charging. So you can get real fast charging out of it. Um, so battery life wise, this thing is just absolutely fantastic. I have no problem recommending this in terms of battery life. I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10 in battery life as well. Software is another area. I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10 when it comes to the software. I actually prefer this to my Google Pixel 2 XL. Now, one thing that I will say um, that if there's going to be a negative about the software on this phone is that you're not going to get obviously the update as fast as you're going to get on the Google Pixel 2 XL. Obviously, this is going to get the fastest update you can possibly get. Um, but I honestly prefer uh, the OnePlus 5 software over Android Oreo. So I'll take this software over that. And that's because they have so many nice tweaks to it. So if I go into uh, the options that they have here, so the customizations that they have available, so the alert slider, um, the buttons, basically that just allows you to long press these buttons or double tap some of them in order to get di different things to happen. So um, I really haven't been using that a whole lot, not that one, um, but some of them that I have been using are the gestures. Um, so there's some awesome gestures available in here so you can see swipe fingerprint for notifications. That's not really anything new. A lot of phones have that one. Uh, we have the long press uh, to take a photo. That's just another option they have available. So while you're taking a photo, you can just, uh, when you're in the camera, you can just long press the fingerprint sensor and take a photo there. Um, you can flip to mute. Three finger uh, screenshot works really well. Um, no problem with that one. Double tap to wake is really, really nice because of the face ID. So let's go ahead and I'm going to turn this off and uh, I'm going to take it just a little bit off screen. 
um, but we'll double tap and just kind of take it a little off screen so you can see it. I mean, the face ID on this thing just flies and uh, obviously not as secure as what you're getting on the iPhone 10 or even on the Samsung devices, but this thing just flies. It's as fast as the fingerprint sensor, which by the way is also crazy fast. Um, so that is a huge plus for this one. So software wise, I just absolutely love this phone. Um, gestures, um, there are lots of cool gestures in here. Some of my favorite, I use V for flashlight. You can see how fast that turns on and off. I mean, it's almost immediate. Circle for camera, again, it's literally immediate. As soon as you do it, it's pretty much there doing it. Um, so those work very well. The gestures are absolutely fantastic. So speaker wise, I'm not going to give this one a 10 out of 10. It does have a very loud speaker though. So let's go ahead and listen to that. Um, there's a bottom, one bottom firing speaker. So that's probably a little bit of a negative. It doesn't have dual speakers like something like the Google Pixel 2 XL or even the iPhone 8 Plus or iPhone 10. Um, so let's go ahead and listen to a quick song here. So royalty free beats. We'll just take a quick listen to it. I'm not going to belabor this too much, but crank the volume all the way up. It gets loud, by the way. All right, here we go. Decent amount of bass. It's not the greatest, but decent. Certainly capable of doing speaker phone calls. Okay, so speaker-wise, I'm definitely not going to give it a 10 out of 10. Again, in order to get a 10 out of 10, you really need dual speakers. Um, but this has a very good speaker, certainly not uh, one that I would say is terrible. In fact, I, I kind of maybe would go down to like an 8 out of 10 because it's plenty loud. Um, but now let's go ahead and talk about some of these other areas. So this phone is missing waterproofing. So if you're going to knock this phone in any area, waterproofing will definitely be one of the areas. Um, personally, not something I need. I don't really ever have a situation where I need waterproofing. Um, so that's not really really one that I really care all that much about. It is nice to have, um, but not one that I care about all that much. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into the audio settings now. So first of all, one thing that is definitely a huge plus about the audio here is that we do have that 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. The other thing that I really like about the audio with this phone is the fact that if we go into sound and settings, where's the sound settings here? There it is, sound and vibration, um, and come down all the way to the very bottom, we have this audio tuner. So if you plug in your 3.5 millimeter uh, headphones, um, you can see that we can set the equalizer so we can kind of adjust whatever we want. So if we want some more uh, bass heavy uh, system, then we can go ahead and put that in here. Or if we want a little bit more trouble, uh, we can do that. We can go ahead and set that in our equalizer. But the other thing I really like is if you have Bluetooth headphones plugged in, you can see here there's an option for earphones type. You can actually pick the audio codec that your Bluetooth headphones support. So if you have aptX, you can change that to get the best audio possible out of the Bluetooth headphones uh, with the OnePlus 5T, which is not something I've ever seen really in anything other than Xiaomi phones. Uh, Xiaomi phones, I have seen something where they can do that, um, but they have that available here in the OnePlus 5T. So audio-wise, I definitely give this one a huge thumbs up. So one other thing that to talk about is the fact that this is unlocked, but it's only GSM unlocked. So that is definitely a disadvantage when it comes to something like the Google Pixel 2 XL. I can pretty much put whatever SIM I have. So I have a Cricut SIM, I have a Verizon SIM, and I have a couple of T-Mobile SIMs. I can put any of those SIMs into my uh, Google Pixel 2 XL, but I can't put my Verizon Verizon SIM into the OnePlus 5T. So hopefully at some point uh, OnePlus does decide to, to support uh, the CDMA uh, bands, LTE bands, but as of right now you can't use it with Verizon or Sprint. So that's just a little bit of a negative. Um, but overall this phone I paid $560 for it and I feel like their motto is they're so close to hitting that, never settling, because there is very, very little that you have to settle with with this device. Now, I do really like the Google Pixel 2 XL. It is a absolutely fantastic device, but I paid $900 for this thing. I actually paid over $900 once it comes to tax and everything like that. Um, but uh, I paid $560 for this one, and I feel like I really am not gaining that much. Now, if you need the best cameras and you want Android, I would say 
you definitely want to get the Google Pixel 2 XL because it has the absolute best cameras. And if you want the absolute latest software, then of course you want the Google Pixel 2 XL. But if you just want something that you're really not settling much on at all, I think the OnePlus 5T is definitely a phone that you should consider picking up. And I wouldn't hesitate at all to recommend it. If you're on a GSM network inside the United States, this is the phone I would say you can't pass up on. The OnePlus 5T absolutely gets my seal of approval. Thanks for watching, and I will see you all in the next video. Peace.